Hallelujah, hallelujah. Continue to wave those hands this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We invite the hallelujah. presence of the Holy Spirit this morning because without him we cannot make hallelujah. it. Without Jesus we cannot hallelujah. make it. Hallelujah. We thank you for our breakthrough this morning. And we're going to break through with hallelujah. praise this morning. If you believe that, clap your hands this morning. Clap your hands and shout like you never did before. My breakthrough is on its way. Hallelujah. Our breakthrough is on its way. And it's all because of Jesus. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the praise and all the glory belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to start off by singing, Oh, come let us adore him this morning because he deserves it. Oh, hallelujah. Our hallelujah belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come let us adore Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. Oh, come, oh, come let Yeah. 
kingdom. Say King Jesus again. Hallelujah. Oh King Jesus. Yes, Lord. No, no, no. situation we know and we know that he cleanses us we know that he forgive us no matter what and he knows our heart and he say a contrite heart he will not despise so pour out your problems and your troubles to Jesus and he'll heal it he will take care of it and he will set us free so our walls has been broken down today Clap your hands if you know that Jesus is going to break our walls down. It's only Jesus can break down the demons and throw away every weapon and every high thing that the devil thinks he's doing against the child of God. Jesus is going to break it down. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We will sing, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You know, we are nearly out of the year, and he has really done great things for us. So let us bless his name from our heart this morning, thanking him for what he has done for us. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all.
to praise God. Isn't it a good thing to give praise to God? The psalmist said, I was glad when they say unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And when we go to the house of the Lord, it's to praise him. It's to worship him. And to say, Lord, I thank you. And I praise you for your goodness. Hallelujah. In spite of the pain, I look and sweet because of Jesus Christ and his goodness upon me. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. This joy that I have, the world did not give it to us and the world can't take it away because it's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to his matchless name. To the rough and the thick, he is with us. To the good and the joy, he is with us because he is good and his mercies endure it forever. Praise unto the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us continue by singing angels we have heard tonight this morning as we are in the Christmas season. Hallelujah. Angels we have heard and high sweetly singing. Yeah. 
to Jesus. Jesus, our newborn king. How many years now? More than over 2,000 years. That's why we rejoice. That's why we rejoice in him. Amen. Praise the Lord. We will sing this chorus, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost this morning. Then after this, we'll take up our morning tithes and offering. Amen. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Oh, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Kingdom. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on, come on everybody. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on, come on everybody. Oh, righteousness, peace, joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you wanna be a part of the kingdom? Don't you wanna be a part of the kingdom? Don't you wanna be a part of the kingdom? Of the kingdom? Come on, come on, everybody! Oh, there is love in the kingdom. Oh, so much love in the kingdom. Yes, there is peace in the kingdom. Come on, come on, everybody. Oh, righteousness and peace, joy in the Holy Hallelujah. Oh, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. I tell you, righteousness. on the web this morning come and be a part of the kingdom of God because God loves you he loves you he died for you so just come on 
trust him in your life if you try everything in this world and it don't work out we are encouraging you this morning from the new testament church of calder in saint vincent and the grenadines to try jesus christ and he will never never fail you he will never never let you down so come and be a part of the kingdom of god hallelujah hallelujah we'll take up our morning titan our friend and as we sing go tell it on the mountain this morning go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born go tell it on the mountain Up on the mountain, way up on the mountain, when my Savior heard my blessed call, he took me up on the mountain, way up on the mountain, drinking from the fountain that never runs. Oh, I was up on the mountain, way up on the mountain, when my Savior heard my people call, he took me up on the mountain. Way up on the mountain, drinking from the fountain that never run dry. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is. Let us go one more time. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We now have. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this offering, Lord. I pray that you will bless it and multiply it for the Father and of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Now we're gonna go around and greet somebody in Jesus' name. Beloved, let us love one another. Amen. Because love is of God. Amen. Oh, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Let us love one another First John 4, 7 and 8 Beloved, let us love one another For love is of God And everyone that loveth is born of God And knoweth God He that loveth not, knoweth not God For God is love Oh, beloved, let us love one another First John 4, 7, Beloved, beloved, let us love one another.
clap your hands if you believe that this morning. So you're my brother and you're my sister. We are to correct each other, love of each other every day, pray for each other. Amen. And we will stand because when we have love one for another, others will know that we love Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Just before we hand back over to the moderator, we're going to do this worship as we get our hearts and our mind set in the right place for the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord,
worship this morning we have glorified God we have given honor to God hallelujah now it's time for us to get the food the same how you eat that big chicken when you go home the same how you eat that rice we also our spirits need food to grow we can't look on our physical and just feed our physical but we need to grow spiritually and we need the word of God to grow, to help us maintain, to strengthen us, to give us that vitamin to go on and on. Hallelujah. To bring us the word this morning, it's a vibrant young lady. She's always on fire for God. When I mean on fire, she's always on fire for God. So this morning, please help me welcome no other than Minister Diana C. Williams to give you the word this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister King. To God be all honor, glory, and praise. Thank you, worship team, for taking us into worship. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Yeke labashiki alabashante ekalabashai. Glory and honor and might and power are due to your matchless name. For you are the only true and righteous God. There is none to be compared to you. Incomparable God, we just worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For your glory, Lord. I will do anything, Lord. Show us your glory, Lord. Your glory speaks of your presence. Your glory speaks of your power. Your glory speaks of your goodness. And this morning we want your glory more than even food itself. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords, mighty God, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the great I am, Lord, our shepherd, our savior. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, the King of kings, oh, the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Oh, God, I worship you, Adonai, Lord of hosts. Oh, hallelujah, the bright and morning star. Hallelujah, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, goodwill towards men. We praise you and we just worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to you, Lord. We will decrease so that you can increase in us. More of you, Lord, and less of us. Hallelujah. Let your glory fill our lives individually collectively 
Let your glory fill this tabernacle, O oh God. O oh God, this morning we come to hear from you. We thank you for the worship, Lord. We thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for the praying, O oh God. And we thank you, Father God, for your word, O oh God, that we are now going to into. We pray, Lord, that we will hear a word from you. And the word will make a change in our lives. Oh God, let not your word go through one ear and comes out at the other ear. But let your word fall on fertile soil and bring forth fruit a hundredfold. Oh God, and when you would have heard your word, let us go out, oh God, and do what your word compels us to do. We come against hindering spirits. We come against obstacles. We come against every plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And we take authority over every walk of the enemy. And we decree and declare breakthrough is ours today. We decree and declare victory is ours today. For we serve a risen Christ. And Lord, we just bless you. And we just worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome again to the house of God. We thank God for those of you who are visiting. We thank God for the family. I can't remember your surname that is living just below us there. We are glad to have you. Give them a clap, please. We thank you for having Mr. Ford with us this morning. We thank you for having the Miller, the Millers, mother and son. We thank you for the lady who is behind Brother Kwame. It's good to have you. Thank God. We pray that you will come again. And we thank God for all of you. When, we, we, when you don't come, we, we miss you. Because we love you. And we need you. Sometimes in our culture, we don't say it enough. We don't say it enough we love you. And sometimes there are people who are going through so many things. Even people who are married, you know, who are living in a family. Sometimes they don't even take the time off to say, I love you and I care. But when we come to the house of God, we are a family. And we should take the time off to say, I love you. I care for you. And when we don't see somebody for a long time, we say, we miss you. Come again. And we are glad to have Sister Coombs with us again. And little, little Ryan. We are glad to have Dougal, legal. <laughs> Thank God for them. And I pray God in time that their whole families the whole family will be here to worship with us. Praise God. This morning, Pastor and his family, they are not here. He has a funeral way down in Rose Hall. And you know, it, it wasn't possible for him to come here and then get to that funeral for one, two o'clock. So, he's not here this morning. And yesterday was his birthday. Pastor, happy belated birthday. I didn't know. I spoke with him yesterday, but I didn't know it was his birthday. He didn't say anything. So, whenever he listens, happy belated birthday to our pastor. And uh, Joshua too, Joshua's birthday was yesterday. Okay, so happy belated birthday to Joshua. And those of you would have celebrated in the week. Happy birthday, belated birthday. It's good to be alive again. Sometimes you go to sleep 
and you don't know if you will wake up to see another day. It is just um, last week, this is a new week. Someone who we know very well, he usually come down every year from the United States of America for vacation. He would have come by us and all like that. He's a friend to our family. And uh, you know, when family has a friend, it's everybody, it's all of us friends. That is the kind of way we grew up. And he came down, I think, the Saturday night. He, he, the Saturday evening, he went across by the road, um, the, boys in, the boys on the block in the community whom he knew. He went back home. The next morning, my relatives went to pick up from him. He would have called him and told them he brought something from from their sister for them. When they went and they knocking on the door, there was no response. His sister left, lived adjoining to him. When she went and she checked, he was lying there a dead man. He wasn't on medication or anything. They didn't know of any sickness. Well, you know, if you die like that, they will have to carry out an um, autopsy. So I don't know what the autopsy has shown. So um, maybe by this afternoon or whatever, I will know. So sometimes we live as if, but today, let us live close to God. And when we live close to God, we will have love for one another. Because we can't love God without loving and caring for each other. And I really want to thank those of you who would have encouraged me from time to time, who would have said, pleasant words, I do thank you and I do appreciate it. I do appreciate it highly. And I give God thanks for you here. Continue to serve God. Um, this morning, the message I'll be bringing will be taken from Luke 2, 1 to 11, which Sister Lewis would have already read. Um, with special emphasis on verse 11, which says, maybe we can read it together, Luke 2, 11, it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So I'll be speaking on the topic, God sent a Savior. God sent a Savior. Let's say it together. God sent a Savior. Praise God. Now in Jesus' day, in the land of Judah, the land of Judah was controlled by Rome. And Caesar Augustus, the Roman emperor at that time, called for a census. We are familiar with census here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is a counting of all the people. You want to know how many people are in the country. So you count the people. And this was for the purpose of taxation. Yes, even today we cry out about taxation, ain't it? You have to pay so much tax. Sometimes I wonder if tax should be on food. You go, you buy a roti, when you look on the bill, you see tax on it. You buy any other thing, tax is on it. And even when you go to the, 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 the market, you might not get a bill. But guess what? <laughs> I will say taxes on it because everything is so exorbitant. Now, usually, 
the census was taken in the place of residence. That is where one lives. Because if they're taking um, a census here, they will come to you in your community. Different people will co go to different communities. But here what happened this time. Caesar decree said that the people traveled to their homeland. You know, the, the people had to travel to their homeland. And this was done to bring about a fulfillment of prophecy. So Joseph went to Bethlehem because he was a member of David's family. And at that time, you know the story of Mary, how she was conceived and all like that. She was conceived by whom? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So Mary was great with child, and she went along with Joseph. It was about 70 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. They were living in Nazareth and they had to go to Bethlehem and it was about 70 miles. So, let us imagine how difficult it was for Mary on a donkey back on a rough road during the journey. I don't know for you if you've ever ridden on a donkey. One time I rode on a donkey. And guess what? The next day you are sore. I never try that again. So I could imagine for Mary, big pregnant and on a donkey. She was brave too. Now they arrived in Bethlehem after about three days journey. And I guess she was very tired. You pregnant ladies, you know how it is. You get tired easily. To sit down is a problem. To get up is a problem. So, but guess what? To their dismay and in Mary's condition, there was no available room in the inn for Mary to get some rest to lie down and rest. I guess Joseph in his concern for Mary, because he loved Mary, he would have pleaded with the innkeeper to find a room for her to be in so that she can rest, relax in her condition. But the only place that was available was a stable in a cave. So Joseph had no choice but to accept it because he was concerned for Mary in her condition. And to make matters worse, while they were there, Mary went into labor. And you know when a baby is to be born, regardless of where you are, you can't hold it in. If you are in the marketplace on a Saturday morning, and it's time, whether it's in a plane or wherever, you will give birth to that baby. So, <laughs> so she went into labor and she gave birth to her first born son. And Mary was a teenager and she was a young girl. Okay? So what did she do? She wrapped him in swaddling clothes. That is a cloth in which newborn oriental babies were wrapped. I don't want to go into um, the swaddling and all that because that is not really what my message is about. But the swaddling clothes, it says something. So Joseph had to clean out a manger or a stall and turn it into a cradle. I want to let us know that there was no royal pomp about Jesus' birth. He was a special child. We know that he was the king of kings and the lord of lords. But yet he was not born in a palace. 
kings born in palace. Princess born in palace. They belong to royalty. Jesus belonged to royalty. Yet he was not born in a palace. But nevertheless, God his father was in control. Because you know what? Jesus' birth in Bethlehem was a fulfillment of Micah 5 2. What does it say? But thou Bethlehem, Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. And that prophecy is speaking about whom? Jesus. So God allowed Jesus to be born in a stable. He was born under ordinary circumstances, much like all of us, so that he could identify with us. And we could identify with him as poor, ordinary people. However, although there was nothing royal about his birth, there was angelic announcement that a king was born. I want you to note well that in Luke 2, 8 to 11, when you read the scripture, Jesus' coming and the announcement of his coming were not done to identify with royalty but with the common man. The angel appeared to shepherds who were out in the field watching over their flock. Now, people, they have all sorts of things to say about Christmas. They say it's pagan and all kind of things. It wasn't Jesus wasn't born on the 20 wasn't born on the 25th of December. For me, it's not about the date when he was born. The important thing is that he was born and he came for a purpose. Some people will say, if you if you do research, you will find some people say he was born somewhere about August. September about that time because the fact that shepherds were out with their sheep that means it was not a cold time it was a warmer time of the year but I am here to say it doesn't matter what time what date the important thing is that he was born and he was born for a purpose now who did the angels appear to? Shepherds. Now shepherds rank near the bottom of the Jewish social order. They were low down there. They were poor and they were despised by other classes. Like the middle class, the upper class, they were despised by those people. And in those days, nobody wanted their daughter to marry to a shepherd. Nobody wanted their children to be married into poverty. You know what? God did not, yet God did not despise them. And listen to me. Regardless to what state of life we are in, God doesn't despise us. He doesn't. He does not discriminate against us. He doesn't say, you are rich, so I love you more. You are poor, so I love you less. Jesus loves us all the same. Whether we are rich, whether we are poor, whether we are tall, whether we are short, whether we are medium-sized, whether we are fat, regardless to our state in life, God loves us. He loves us. 
So on that special night, God chose to give them an experience they would never forget. So, what the scripture says, the heavens were filled with the glory of God. What is the glory of God in that sense? It is the radiance of God's presence. His glory, his Shekinah glory, filled the area where they were. And I pray God that the glory of God will, will, fill, will fill our lives, will fill this tabernacle, the presence of God. And when we come into worship, there will be no time for nothing else, but we'll be caught up in the presence of Almighty God. Now, the presence of God was awesome, and the shepherds were quaking with fear. They did not know what to expect, but you know what the angel did? It soothed their fear by saying, what did he say to them? Fear not. They were not to be afraid. And then they made an announcement. What is that announcement? In verse 10. Behold. Look. I bring you good tidings. What is good tidings? Good news of great joy. Great joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Jesus brings joy. Which shall be to all people. Not some people, but all people. We who know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, we should be filled with joy. Even though we don't have money in our pockets, we should have joy for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Even though we can't buy ham for Christmas, we should be filled of joy for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Even though we can't buy new curtains, we should be filled with joy for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Strength, even though we can't paint up our houses, we should be filled of joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Jesus Christ is not looking for that, He is looking for our hearts. He wants us, a people. Oh, God, help us. To put our priorities right. And let the joy of the Lord be our strength. And when the joy of the Lord is in us. It will be like a well springing up. And we will be praising God. We will be worshiping God. Sister Grant would not have to come up here. And say, raise your hand to praise Almighty God. Regardless, we will lift our hands. And we will say, glory to God in the highest. In spite of, glory to God in the highest. Oh, hallelujah. And when you praise God, you wouldn't know where it come from. Hallelujah. God will have men. God will have women to give into your bosom. You wouldn't know where it comes from. It will be coming from the north. It will be coming from the south. It will be coming from the east. It will be coming from the west. Don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on who you have. Not on what you don't have. Focus on who you have. Who do you have? 
the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, our strength and our shield, our buckler. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So joy is the proper response to God's saving deeds. Hallelujah. The angel was saying, this was a time to rejoice, not to fear. The king had come. This is good news, good tidings for all people. And what was the good news? The good news is the birth of a savior, the universal deliverer. When I say universal, I mean it comes for everybody. Whether you're black or white, wherever you are, wherever you live, for the whole world, wherever you are. And only Jesus could truly bring about release from the bondage of to evil deeds, hate, death, and corruption. Jesus Christ came to set us free from those things. We are to be free in our spirit towards one another. And if when we see each other, something is boil up in us, and we have to cut our eyes at each other, something is wrong. We got to go back to the cross. We got to go back to Jesus. When I see you, I should be glad to see you. When I, I hear you, I should be glad to hear you. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ came to bring about release from the bondage to evil, to hate and death. Death. So there is no gospel unless it is centered on Jesus Christ. The son of the living God who shed his blood for the forgiveness of sins. So this good news was to be to all people. The whosoevers. The whosoever. Say, I am one of the whosoever. I am one of the whosoever. Thank God for Jesus. So the scope of God's plan for this, from this angelic message was to include all. Whosoever would call upon the name of Jesus. And in verse 11, which I'll be spending most time on. Praise God. The angel linked the newly arrived king with David, his legal ancestral father. So although Joseph was not physically the father of Jesus, he was the legal father and would share in the same lineage or descent or family. So God had also arranged it that Mary was also a descendant of David. Read Matthew 1 when you get home and you will see that. Now this was the fulfillment of God's promise to David that one of his descent would always be available for the throne of David. David. And you notice he said in verse 11, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior which is Christ the Lord. Now the term Christ the Lord indicates that the savior who was born is the Messiah that God had promised to Israel. So Jesus was sent to be a savior. Who is a savior? One who performs the act of saving or delivering. In the Old Testament, Jehovah God is the savior of his people. 
And you can, you can find that in Psalm 106, 21, Isaiah 43, 3 and 11, Isaiah 45, 15 and 21, Isaiah 63, 8, Jeremiah 14, 8, and Hosea 13, 4. So in the Old Testament, the deliverance is physical. When you read these scriptures, the deliverance is physical. He gave safety, security, and he delivered his people from their enemies. That is physical. Now in the New Testament, Jesus is the Savior beyond comparison. We can say he is the Savior par excellence. What do I mean? Above excellence. As in Luke 2.11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So, Jesus now, Jesus is not just not now is not just saving us physically. He is now saving us from sin and condemnation. Because all of us were doomed and condemned for hell. So when Jesus comes as a savior, he comes to save us from our sin and condemnation. So the in the New Testament is spiritual. Whereas in the Old Testament it was physical. Now in the New Testament it is spiritual. And if you want the scripture for those it's taken from. Philippians 3.20, 2 Peter 2.20, 1 John 4.14. Now the prophet spoke of one who would come and bring spiritual deliverance or salvation. So the sending of Christ the Messiah, the Lord, the anointed one to bring about salvation was a sign of God's love. Because in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life and we know that the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation according to Romans 1:16 so Jesus Christ was a baby born with a destiny like no other. The Christ child came to proclaim the gospel to the poor, to heal the sick, to set captives free, and to proclaim the favorable, favorable year of the Lord, according to Luke 4, 18 to 19. The babe of Bethlehem came ultimately to die people are thinking now of Jesus still in a manger in a cradle but Jesus is no longer in a cradle he's no longer in a manger he came and he died he's risen so there is no Christmas unless there is a cross so when you think of Christmas, you have to think about the cross that Jesus went to and he hung there half naked for my sin and for your sin. Hallelujah. So when the angel announced him as Savior, he announced his mission. To be Savior means he is our sin offering. We could not die to save ourselves. Because we are all from Adam's 
fallen race. So Jesus Christ, the sinless son of God, he came and he died for us. He had to save his people from their sins and eternal death. Because if we were not saved, we will have, you have physical death, you have spiritual death, and you have eternal death. And if we die in our sins, we, own, we have spiritual death, and then we have eternal death. Straight to hell we are going. But you know what? 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin became sin on our behalf so we can become right with God. So church, when we are right with God, we can now say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Church, let us say that. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we come to church and we sit down and we don't know who we are in Christ. But we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Confess it. Decree it. Declare it. And see it. Whoa, the righteousness of God walk in your life. Now the problem of sin was so bad. That only a righteous God could solve it. So all of us, no matter how good we think we are, no, no matter how strict we were brought up, you know, prior to giving my life to Jesus Christ, I couldn't see myself as a sinner because we grew up so strict. These days you tell children, sit there, who are you talking to? But in our dirty home we grew up in, sit there, you sit down. You better sit. Go and go to the shop. Your parents will spit on the ground before that dry reach back here. And you be, you're trying to reach back before it dry. Children, children today is not like that. So no matter how good we thought we were, I didn't see myself as a sinner. But regardless of how good we are, we have all missed the mark. We have all experienced Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden. And all of us need to experience Jesus Christ as Savior. Sister Miller's son is the youngest child here, baby. He was a year in November. Ten months, sorry, ten months. I forget. No, okay. <laughs> I'm going beside myself. He's a baby, right? But yet he is a sinner. Why? Because he was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And that is why. As a, you have to train them from small and bring them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And when they come to an age of accountability, you encourage them to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Because when they reach, when they pass a certain age and their peers have influence on them, it is hard to get them to give their lives to Jesus Christ. So all of us need to experience Jesus Christ as Savior. Jesus did not come to die for successful people. Princes and kings are good people. But he came to die for all the whole world, sinners, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
And only with God's help, we can make it. Sometimes we sit in church and we criticize those on Heritage Square. Those who dress half naked, everything hanging out. But if it isn't for the grace of God and that we know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, we'll be in that same condition. So it is only with God's help we can make it. And we can't be in church and play in church. We have to mean Christ. We have to call on Jesus to help us. Help me, Lord. You can't reach to the place where you feel that you have arrived in Jesus Christ and hit yourself on your chest and say, I have arrived. No, you need Jesus Christ every day. And in your going out, in your coming in, you have to say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Because there are many who would have walked with Christ and they are no more. So we have to ask God to help us. Jesus Christ, he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. He can see the beginning. He can see the middle. He can see the ending. And that is why we need to put our lives in his hand. So no one else could have been the savior of the world but Jesus. Not Mohammed. Not John Smith. Not Ellen G. White. Not Buddha. No one else but Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, could be the Savior of the world. You know why? Because there's nowhere to God but to God himself. And Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. So there's nowhere to the Father but through his son, Jesus Christ. And all we need to know of the Father, we know through the Son. And if you notice up, um, with verse 11, it also speaks of Jesus as Christ or Messiah. He's the one anointed to rule as King and Lord. Means that he is the divine one to whom all must know. Our later power. So we come to church. We worship and we bow down. Lord, we worship and we bow down. And we stand straight like a arrow. We too stiff to bow. But we have to bow. If we am bow now, we have to bow later. We all of us, we have to bow before his throne we bow down and we worship him confessing that his will must be done so today as we celebrate christmas we may want to ask ourselves this question individually or personally whose birthday am i celebrating or we may ask ourselves collectively, whose birthday are we celebrating? Um, a few years ago, my sister came down and she had one big birthday party for me. I'm not a birthday person, eh? but she had this big birthday. I'd rather she had given me the money, but I said, thank you. And I go to Bukama and just relax down there for a weekend. But she had a party. I was in the party. I didn't know about the parties. My, the, the, the planet behind my back. The buy the clothes, everything I had to wear. Not a thing I had to get. And I was taken to the party. Surprise party. Send out invitation all thing. 
official party. I was there at the party. I was there at the celebration. If we are having celebration for Jesus, shouldn't Jesus be in the midst? But too often, we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is nowhere in the party. He's nowhere in the celebration. And if we do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we cannot truly celebrate, celebrate his birthday. And if you don't know him, this morning, this is a perfect time for you to get to know him. If we claim to know him as Lord and Savior, and all we are taken up with is nicing up our homes, mind you, I'm not saying nothing is wrong. Sometimes you could get nicer things to buy at this time. And there is such a Niceness about this time of the year. It's cooler. And like me who is always sweaty, I welcome it because it's cool and nice. You can get a few. <laughs> you could get some nicer things to buy and all like that as I said. But if we are only taking up with nice in up our homes, the food we are going to eat, some people say they don't buy the ham. What is there about ham? You could go in the supermarket anytime and you can buy ham, ain't it? You can buy a whole ham. You can go buy graves. You can buy how much you can afford. People talk about green peas. You can get green peas. You freeze it. You have green peas all the year round. Sorrel. Don't talk about sorrel beer, ginger beer. You could drink sorrel beer and ginger beer anytime. And by the way, ginger beer is a healthy drink. I know some people don't like the local, but it is a very healthy drink. Especially for you people who are getting older, it takes inflammation out of your body. So, if you're only concerned about the food we are going to eat, the presents we are going to get, it means that we have missed the mark. Salvation is the greatest gift we can receive. Let us not take it lightly. Nor ignore it. Because it cost Jesus Christ his life. Celebrating Christmas must include seeking God's will. And a way to spread the message. Telling others about why Jesus came and what he means to you. Why Jesus came, what he means to me. He saves me. In that while I was yet a sinner, he saves me. What he means to others. And we should do as the shepherd did. It means not losing focus of whose birthday we are celebrating. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the savior of the world who God sent. So listen to me now. Instead of clearing the old and <laughs> an unwanted thing out of our house, the stuff out of our houses. Let's get down to the natural. You look on people's garbage and um, people things that they're throwing out now. You see a lot of good stuff, ain't it? We are emulating America. And we have to be careful. One of these days, we will need what we are throwing away. People have mats they can wash. Wash the mats and use them again. They take down curtains they don't want to wash them. They drop them in the garbage. 
Richard them away. I have curtains upon my curtains in my house for three years now. So because Christmas coming, I'm going to take them down and show them out? Not at all. So, instead of clearing out the old and unwanted stuff out of our homes alone, let us clear out of our lives all the sins, the unforgiveness, the hatred, the envy, the strife, all that is not of God. And let us repent before God for all the wrongs we have done. The way we have treated God. The way we have taken him for granted. And put other things before him. God has been so good to us. And yet we put so much things before God. Sometimes I do agree we don't feel well enough. One of these days I will share my testimony for the last two years, what has been happening. And I come here week after week on a Wednesday, on a Sunday, wherever. And only God alone knows. I will say, even if I'm not feeling well, why stay at home? Because you know, when you stay at home and then you are by yourself, the enemy walk on your mind. But when you come to the house of God and you have fellowship one with the other, your spirit is lifted. You worship God. You go home back and you feel better. So let us stop taking God for granted. Let us stop putting other things before him. And when we do that, he will abundantly pardon us and receive us. Because he says, he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. So God wants us to draw near to him. Jesus wants us to draw near to him. He wants to make us into vessels of honor. Not dishonor. Fit for his service. He wants us to be pure as gold, refined gold for the master's use. So what better time is there for us to yield ourselves to God than today, this Christmas? then guess what? We'll have a real wonderful Christmas with Christ as the Lord of our lives. Christmas will be a more meaningful time for us than the beauty of Christ. Hallelujah! The peace of Christ. The radiance of Christ. The hope of Christ, the love of Christ, the joy of Christ will emanate from us. And every day will be like Christmas. Not just around this time, but every day will be like Christmas. Whether it be January, February, March, regardless of when, every day will be like Christmas. And I want to remind you that many people at this time of the year, I don't know for the statistic in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, because sometimes you can hardly get statistics for this country. Sometimes if I'm doing a research, because the work I do, it calls for a lot of research. Um, you can hardly get information, statistics for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but you can get a lot for United States of America and those places. 
The statistics have shown that many people at this time of year, they are very lonely and depressed. And guess what? Many of them take their lives. Many people, they live alone. They don't even have anybody to say, how are you doing? To do something for them. They are shut in. Nobody to do anything for them. They are depressed. Sometimes they die in their home all alone. And people find them many days after. But for this Christmas, let us remember those of us, those who are into the baking up and the cooking up and all like that, let a, let's remember to share with somebody less fortunate. The Christmas kettle is there for Salvation Army, and I think they are doing a great job. It's not here in St. Vincent alone, it's around the world. Gift to that. We have a benevolence ministry here in this church. Gift to it. And guess what? When we give, we will be blessed. Because it is in giving that we are blessed. God gave. He gave his son to be the savior of the world. And so too, we must give. Have a Christ-filled Christmas. And tell everyone God sent his savior to rescue them from sin and eternal death. May God richly bless you. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We bless you, we praise you, we worship you. You are awesome. There is none to be compared with you. We thank you, Father God, you sent your son to be the savior of the world. And I pray, God, this day that those who do not know you as Lord and Savior, they will come to the saving knowledge of your truth. And those who know you as Lord, they will spread the word that you are Savior. You have come to save the world, to set us free, O oh God, from sin and eternal death. You have come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So, Father God, in Jesus' name this day, help us to open our spirit wide to you so that you can come in and you can abode in us. You can have fellowship with us. You can transform us, oh God, and make us into the type of people you will have us to be. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for doing it in Jesus' name.